Okay. <clears throat> I think it's about time. All right. So, so the Pi Day website is working now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just enter my own birth date in there and see where it pops up. And so in the digits of Pi, my birthday starts on the 338 six eleventh digit. Uh, so that's pretty far in there. Does anybody want to test out their favorite number, their birth date, or anything like that? What's up, Ed? Bam. Look at that. Ed's birthday was buried way in there, about 1.5 million digits back. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's one of the interesting things about pi. Um, and that goes right along with one of my favorite mathematical theories that we'll go over real quick before we jump into the official stuff. Have you guys ever heard of the infinite monkey theorem? So this one's pretty cool. It has to do with infinity. Um, so the theorem goes that if a monkey were sitting in front of a typewriter and he had a random chance to hit any letter and any given time and you sat him down for an infinite amount of time and he just hit buttons randomly, eventually he would type out the full works of Shakespeare. The probability is extremely low, but when we're talking about infinity, that doesn't matter anymore, right? I mean, it, you know, if your probability is five gazillion to one, well, five gazillion is out there somewhere, right? And if you're going to infinity, you're way past that. So that's one of the more interesting theorems, I think. All righty. <clears throat> so today we'll be going over section 1.5, and this has to do with the addition of real numbers and using the number line to complete that addition and also uh, not using the number line to complete that addition. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of problem solving and what we call combining like terms. All right, so we'll go into the addition first. All right, to add A plus B on the number line, we start at A and move according to B. That's it, right? And so <clears throat> if B is positive, we move right. If B is negative, we move left. If B is zero, we just stay there. So for this example right here, oops, for this guy, negative four plus nine. We'll call negative four A plus nine B. So we start at negative four, right? And so it says now this is our B and it's positive. So it says we move nine units to the right, okay? Here's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. That is 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4. And this is 5. So right here is where we end up. So we started here, and then we moved 9 units in the positive direction. That's about it when it comes to adding and subtracting on the number line. You're just counting units in the left or right direction. Right? If you're subtracting, then you're going left. If you're adding, you're going right. That's it. That's a good way to visualize positive and negative numbers, adding them. Um, you know, because sometimes it can be weird before you get used to just doing it in your head. So here's another example. Here's two negatives. Suppose we had negative 4 plus a negative 3, and our 0 was right there. So we could start out at negative 4, right? And so this is our a. Negative 3 is our B. Subtracting. Exactly. We're subtracting this one. And so we go 3 units to the left. 1, 2, 3. Where are we at now? Negative 7. Exactly. That's it. When it comes to the number line, you know, you just do that. And it helps when you're not like, you know, you don't actually have to like draw everything out on the number line. It, it just helps to visualize it. You know, I've got plenty of students who like always do that. And they say, like, where am I starting? Okay, now I'm going to the left. There I am. I'm in the right spot. All right, so let's try one more. Suppose we were to start out at 5.2 and add 0. I think you guys can probably predict what's about to happen. All right, we start at 5.2 and we move 0 units. We stay at 5.2, clearly. All right, 
So now, that's kind of that's addition through the number line. Now we're going to get into addition without the number line. Um, before we get too far into this, uh, I want to let you guys know that these, these instructions are overcomplicated. Uh, this is what's in the book, um, you know, and you'll figure out over time that this is like not needed, but uh, you know, it's still good to just learn anyway. So rules for addition of real numbers. If you have two positive numbers, we just add as usual. No problem. If you have two negative numbers, you just add the absolute values and make the result negative, right? So negative 10 plus a negative 10, negative 20, right? We're just going further in the negative direction. Now, when you have one positive and one negative, we subtract the smaller absolute value from the greater absolute value. If the positive absolute value is greater, then the answer is positive. If the negative absolute value is greater, then the answer is negative. If the numbers have the same absolute values, then the result is zero. It's basically saying, like, you know, you just have to recognize which one is larger, right? You know, if you have negative 20 and you're combining it with a positive 10, obviously the result's going to be negative, you know? And so it's just telling you in more complex terms than it needs to that you need to figure out which one's larger and attach the appropriate sign. Okay. The identity property of zero. <clears throat> so, clearly, obviously I should say, um, a plus zero is equal to zero plus a, which is equal to a, right? That makes zero the additive identity. Just like we went over the multiplicative identity the other day where one times a was equal to a times one, which is equal to a, this is the additive identity. Right? And so basically it says these do nothing when you use them with this operation. <laughs> That's basically what it says. You use an operation with it and you get the same thing back. That's what it means to be an identity. All right. So our examples. So we have a negative 12 and a negative 7. This is one of those easy cases where they are both negative. So we say what's the absolute value of negative 12? and we add it to the absolute value of negative seven, right? This is equal to 12 plus seven, which is equal to 19, right? Both of these guys are negative, which means we went in the negative direction. So our answer, our answer is negative 19. Okay, and so like, you know, um, honestly, I, you, you don't have to show me all this absolute value stuff on your homework. Like, you know, if you can work it out without writing them down with absolute values, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> all right, so 1.4 and 8.5. All right, so the instructions say we are to subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger. So absolute value of 8.5 minus, oops, um, yeah, minus the absolute value of negative 1.4. All right, so this is just 8.5 minus 1.4, which is equal to, I don't know, I don't want to do the addition. 7.1. So, is 7.1 positive or negative? What do you guys think? It's positive, right? Because the positive number was the larger number. So clearly, our sum is going to be positive. So this is our result, right? We're going to draw a little arrow here. And this is our result, 7.1. OK, negative 36 plus 21. We can already tell if the answer is going to be negative or positive, right? What's it going to be? It's going to, it's going to be negative, because 36 is larger. So we're going to take the absolute value of negative 36, which is just 36, we're going to subtract 21. What do we get there? So, well, before we, you're jumping ahead of us, so that is equal to 15, right? And then we recognize, just like Ed did real quick, that the larger number's negative. So this guy gets a negative 15 for a result. All right. This guy here, anybody know the answer to this? Zero. Right? Yeah, if they're the same thing and they're opposite signs, it's zero. And we call those additive opposites. Okay, negative 7.8 plus zero. 
negative 7.8, right? Almost doesn't even need to be said. Okay, sometimes we'll get an example where we have multiple things to add up. So the thing to do is combine all the positives, combine all the negatives, and then you just have two numbers to deal with, right? So our positives are 14, 7, and 15. What do we get if we add all those together? 36? Yeah. Yes. So that's 36, right? And what do we get when we add all the negatives together? What is negative 12, negative 5, and negative 2? Negative 19, right? Minus 19. Okay? And then we just have a straightforward subtraction. 36 minus 19. All right. Does that, is everybody okay with that? You know, I know it seems oversimplified sometimes, but then other times it seems a little too weird. All right. Okay, so what does this look like when we're doing word problems? Um, well, when we have like uh, strings of addition and subtractions, it really is just kind of lining them up in a row. You know, there's, it's not super complicated. So for this example, during one four-week period in 2011, the national credit card interest rate dropped by 0.09%, then rose by 0.16%, then stayed the same, I should say stayed, not stated, then dropped by 0.02%. By how much did the national credit card interest rate change? Well, okay. So when they have one of these big, you know, there's a bunch of stuff happening, I like to just write out the sentence and note how many changes there were. So we had four full changes in our word problem, so I just wrote kind of like the basic form of that down here, right? The first change plus the second change plus the third change plus the fourth is the total change. All right, so the first change was 0.09% plus the second change, which was 0.16%. Whoops. Anybody catch my mistake? It, it dropped, right? It dropped by 0.9% first, then it rose. Got to be careful on that. Like, as you see, I just totally spaced it out. I would have got the problem wrong. Okay. Then it stayed the same. We add zero. Then it dropped again. So I'm going to make this a negative sign. Then it dropped again by 0.02%. And that equals is, oops, sorry, um, the third change, which is right here. The fourth change, which is right here, is, is the equals sign, and the total change. Which is equal to 0 0.16, 0.05. Uh, somebody figured that one out. Nice job, guys. Nice job. There we go. So the total change is plus 0 0.5. All right, so that's, that's really it when it comes to the word problems at this level. It's just kind of like breaking it down. How many changes were there? You know, uh, it's easier just to kind of write it out step by step. All right, so combining like terms. So what does it mean to be a like or similar term? That means that you have the exact same variable factor, right? All your variable factors are the same. And what I mean by a variable factor is, right, when we say 3x, the x is the variable factor, right? When we say 10y, the y is the variable factor, right? The difference between constants and variables, right, the 10 is the constant, the y is the variable. What's important when we're combining like or similar terms is just the variables. Right, and so, and so, three x is uh, is like with something uh, that is like nine x, right? Because they have the exact same variable attached to it. Ten y, we'll say these are similar, right? Ten y, that's similar with anything with a y attached to it. And so we'll just say, to keep it general, we'll say a is any number. A y is going to be a similar term. It's going to be like with 10 y, whether A is equal to 9, 10, negative 20, 500,000. It's going to be like, as long as that y is the same, right? So along that same line, 
if something has zero variable terms, it's also like. So we're allowed to combine just plain old constants, right? One, two, three, negative one, whatever. These are all like terms. Okay, um, and here I kind of restate these, right? Examples of like terms, stuff without a variable factor, stuff with only one variable factor. And although we haven't gone over square terms yet, if your variable is squared, then it's not the same as a single variable, okay? And so uh, you can't add 1x squared with 2x. They're not the same. But you could add 3x with 2x. You could add 3x squared with 10x squared, but you can't mix and match, okay? All right, so suppose they wanted us to combine some like terms to form equivalent expressions. Are these guys alike? Yeah, yeah, because they both have just x as their variable factor, right? There's no other number in there, right? And so, what's 9 minus 7? 2x. There we go. Okay, so how about this one? So we can see that some of these are attached to the variable a. Other ones are attached to the variable b. And so we keep those separated. So, we're going to combine our 2a and our 5a, right? 2a minus 5a, what does that equal? Negative 3a. All right, okay, now the b's. 9 minus 3, that's 6b. There we go, and we're done. All right, and so now this next one. As we can see on this next one, there are two constants, so we can add those and we know it. There are also two terms with the variable y attached, so we're going to add those as well. What's up, Ed? What, uh, what sign did you guys so constant What's that? Uh, oh, so we took, um, we took our 9b right here and we subtracted 3b from that. And so 9 minus 3 is equal to 6, right? Yeah, exactly. There's a positive on the 9, right? And so all we need to do is subtract 3 from it because 3 is smaller than 9, so it's kind of obvious how that works out. All right? Okay, so um, we're going to add our constants first. 6 plus 2 is 8. Um, and it looks like we're going to have a negative next because 3.5 is greater than 1. Uh, what is 1 minus 3.5? Negative 2.5. Whoops. That shouldn't be another negative. Negative 2.5y. All right. Um, and, oh, and one thing to notice, you know, you might notice this already, but you can see this y right here. This guy doesn't have a constant in front of it, and that just means the constant's 1. Right? We could write it as 1, but, you know, we don't just because it's, it's supposed to be obvious. All right, so in conclusion for this chapter, uh, now we have rules in place for addition of real numbers. Uh, we're still writing our subtraction in a weird way. We're still writing our subtraction like this, which is strange, uh, but that's just because we haven't officially gone over subtraction yet, and so we need to keep the notation rigorous. Um, it's just a weird math thing. You guys don't have to worry about it too much. But next chapter, we're going to be able to do away with that strange notation. Um, we reviewed how to combine like terms. Remember, they got to have the exact same variable factor. Um, and I already put that down. All right. So let's move on to 1.6. And before we do that, are there any questions about 1.5? OK. Am I going too fast? Is everybody good? All right, don't be afraid to slow me down if I'm going too fast. Sometimes I'm in a hurry because I don't have enough time, but these are both pretty short sections, so we'll probably get out a little bit early tonight anyway. All right, so section 1.6. In this section, we're going to be learning about opposites and multiple negative signs, uh, subtraction of real numbers, and we're going to do a little bit more word problem solving. All right, so let's learn what it means to be an opposite. <clears throat> so the opposite or additive inverse of any number a is just negative a. 
right? It's basically the number that you combine that you add to any other number that gives you a zero, right? And so three minus three equals zero. Three and negative three are both additive opposites, right? Um, four and negative four, those are additive opposites. One and negative one, that's an additive opposite. Uh, one thirteenth and negative one thirteenth, those are additive opposites, okay? All it is is just that same number with a negative attached. So what if we wanted to find the opposite of these numbers? What's the opposite of 34? Negative 34. All right, what's the opposite of negative 8.3? 8.3. What's the opposite of zero? Zero. Whoops, zero. And actually shouldn't be putting equal signs here because they're not equal. <clears throat> All right, now, double negatives. So basically, this law of opposites says that the opposite of an opposite is the original. It's like a double negative, right? But that is apply. It does apply on the number line. It absolutely does. All these apply on the number line, right? The number line is just a graphical representation of the real numbers. And so everything that applies to the real numbers also applies to the number line. They're the same. Okay, so if you had negative a negative 3, that's just equal to 3, right? That's all it's saying. Two negatives equal a positive. Okay, so for an example, they ask us to find negative x and negative negative x when x equals negative 3. Well, first, we're just going to write down negative x and negative a negative x. Right? And this is how I would probably expect you to do this problem on your homework. We're going to say, okay, we're going to sub the 3 in one step at a time. Right? Negative x is equal to negative, in parentheses, negative 3, right? Because x equals negative 3. Two negatives equals a positive, and we get positive 3. Now this one with the double negatives, right? we're going to leave those in place. We're going to still put our negative 3 in parentheses. I'm going to take this one step at a time. Right, so this inner set of negative threes, we're going to do those first, right? This guy is going to carry over. So negative on the outside is still there. Two, po uh, two negatives equals a positive on the inside. So we have three, and our result is negative three. Okay, so, oh, this one. Um, so. Put, uh, put these guys into words, right? So how about this first guy? How would we describe that in words? Two minus eight, two minus eight. there we go. And I, I won't write it down because my handwriting is terrible and you guys don't want to see that. Um, so how about this guy? How do, we, how do we voice a double negative? Well, we say t minus a negative four, right? You could use the word minus twice if you wanted to, but it sounds weird when you do that, right? So we like to say t minus a negative 4, okay? Instead of t minus minus 4. That's weird. Um, oh. You got it, exactly. Minus, uh, negative 6 minus a negative x. You know, and there are multiple ways to say those. Like, you know, the way that I just said it is not the only proper way to say that. That's just one way. All right. Let's go to the next one. The law of opposites. For any two numbers, a and negative a, when you add those, you get zero. Right? When opposites are added, their sum is zero. Pretty self-explanatory there. Um, uh, whoops. Once again, we're finding opposites. It's a little repetitive, but what's the opposite of negative 3? 3. Whoops, no equal sign, right? 3. Okay, what is the opposite of negative 10? 10. Opposite of 14? Negative 14. Too easy. All right, so now we go into subtraction, right? And so <laughs> this, is, this is kind of like a lesson in, in, in how math is, is weird. Um, because we didn't run into this 
official formula before now, we haven't been able to write our subtraction like it's written over here on the left side. I know that's strange, but that's just the way math works. Until you go over some, you know, until it's rigorously defined in a certain way, you're not allowed to use it in that way. In these lower classes, that's less important, but, you know, if you guys ever reach upper division classes, uh, you know, that's a big sticking point. They don't want you to use anything that's not available yet because that breaks rules. All right. <clears throat> so, that is a little bit of notation. Man, we might get done like super early today. I think this happened last year too. Okay, so subtract each of the following. What is two minus six? Negative four. What is four minus a minus nine? So what's a double negative? Positive. 4 plus 9 is what this is, and that is 13. All right. So before I let you guys go, uh, we're just going to go over just a couple of problems from the homework real quick that I saw um, people are having some difficulty on. So on, I believe it was, let's see if I can find the right one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three. If it was 1.2. So one of them was the satellite question. Uh, I think it was, maybe it's on 1.4. Hmm. Where did the satellite? No, it shouldn't be 1.4 because I just had to grade that. It should be 1.1 or 1.2. Yeah, you remember that one. Yeah, and it was just, I just wanted to point out, like, it's a classic example of when they try and confuse you with extra numbers. There it is. Okay, uh, page 8, number 26. And I can just, I'll read the problem out loud, right? So, a communication satellite orbiting 300 miles above the Earth travels at about 27,000 miles in one orbit. The time in hours for an orbit is... I'm sorry, where are we? Uh, we're on page 8, number 26. Thank you. Yeah. And so this is the formula they give us. And then they say where V is velocity in miles per hour. In miles per hour. How long will an orbit take at a velocity of 1125. So notice how uh, the first sentence had the number 300 miles in it. This number was not important at all to the problem, and this is like their classic move, right? They'll introduce multiple numbers, uh, and they're hoping that you, well, they're not hoping, but you know, their, their point is that you, know, you might mess it up because you might enter the wrong number for the variable. And so you just got to be extra careful to make sure that velocity in miles per hour, right? Like it says velocity is in miles per hour, which means it doesn't match the units of just 300 miles because that's a distance, not a velocity. And so um, that was kind of a common uh, sticking point. Um, the other one, the other one was the one where you needed integer solutions to an absolute value problem. And that one was on page 36, number 92. Um, yeah, as long as you drew it correctly. Yeah. Um, so this problem said, consider only integer replacements. So the wording was a little bit strange on this. It should have said, consider only integer solutions. Um, <clears throat> but what that means is that it wants the set of integers that make this equation true, okay? And so it's not an interval, but an integer. And so we can just start considering integers, right? And so if we consider one, right? What if one was equal to x? Well, then we'd have the absolute value of one, which is just one. And then we'd say two is less than one, which is less than five. But this is not true. Question? 
Uh, this one was 1.4, so yeah, this one's due today. <laughs> so yeah, and that's fine if you if you take your uh, solution from this, that's totally fine. Um, so this one's not true. So one is not a solution, right? What about two? What if what's the absolute value of two? Does that make if if two was in place of x, would that make this true? Nope, because this is not a less than or equal sign. It's just a less than sign. What about three? What's the absolute value of three? It's three, right? Yeah. So two is less than three is less than five. That's true, right? And so three is one of our inter integer solutions. Now, since we're dealing with absolute values, right, we consider what's the absolute value of negative three? Three. That also makes this guy true. It's the same equation, right? And so negative three is also an integer solution for this. Can anybody think of another integer that might work for this? Right? Negative four and four. Yeah. Negative four. Absolute value of negative four is four. Four is in between two and five, so we're good. Same thing happens with positive four. And so it's totally understandable if this question confused you. It was confused. It, it was it was worded in a confusing way. Um, but yeah, it basically said like, for what integers is this expression true? Is this inequality true? I'm thinking the boundary boundary line is within two, within five. Well, so if you wanted to do this on a number line, you wouldn't have an interval, right? You would just be marking the integers. You would say. This is a solution at three. You would say this is a solution at four. And then you would say these are both solutions at negative four and negative three. This is how it would look on a number line, right? It wouldn't be an interval at all because it's only asking for integer solutions. Now, if this problem were asking for all numbers x, which made this problem true, then you'd have an interval, right? Because there's a lot of decimals, there's a lot of fractions in between these that will also work, right? And so you'd have like a solid line of solutions. You know, there'd be multiple solid lines, okay? Since this one's just asking for integers, we only consider integers. When they marry each other, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And as you guys will find out with absolute values, um, depending on what kind of problem it is, a lot of times your intervals or your solutions will mirror themselves across the zero mark um, because absolute value just deals with distance from zero and not really positives and negatives. All right. <clears throat> so were there any other questions on the homework or anything like that? Misty? Which, which homework assignments are due today? Um, so today we have... What we went over yesterday is due. So today, oh, did I write those down wrong? Yeah, OK. So today, 1.3 and 1.4 are due. What about 1.2? Oh, yeah, 1.2 as well, if you didn't uh, do that on the first round. Yeah, you're good. Don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, I got, you can have this sheet if you want. This is the homework schedule. I, I thought um, oh. we, I thought that um, one five and one six was due. To oh yeah, I'm so sorry. That's, that's a little bit confusing. Yeah, <laughs> the homework is yeah, it's assigned on the day that it appears on, and then it's due the next class period. Okay, so um, the way it works is one point five and one point six isn't due until Tuesday. Till Tuesday, yeah, exactly. Okay, all yeah. right. All right, guys. So Thank you. we are. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hi, I'm sorry. It's okay. We had a super short lecture tonight, so we're basically done. Um, all right. So thank you, guys. That was kind of a quick lecture. We'll probably stretch it out tomorrow. Um, tutoring's available over there for the rest of the day. All right. All right. And don't worry, because I have this on video, and I will upload it. <laughs>